हेलो फ्रेंड्स हाउ आर यू टुडे इन दिस लेक्चर सीरीज आई विल डिस्कस द इम्पॉर्टेंट परस्पेक्टिव ऑफ द प्रिवेंशन ऑफ करप्शन एक्ट वेयर बाय द अपील फाइल्ड बाय द स्टेट हैज बीन रिजेक्टेड बाय द कंसेंट कोर्ट फ्रेंड्स एज वी नो दैट इन प्रिवेंशन ऑफ करप्शन एक्ट द टू इम्पॉर्टेंट फैक्टर्स प्ले वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट रोल विच लीड टू प्रोसिक्यूशन एंड कन्विक्शन ऑफ द अक्यूज वन इज द डिमांड and second is acceptance and matter connected there with like recovery of money and other scenarios by which the prosecution claims that the accused has accepted the alleged bribe amount voluntarily friends this video is especially made for south indian people the hindi version of this video is also available for north indians so my basic target is that every person should be enlightened as far as his rights are concerned no one should be uneducated If you are educated, you know the law, you know the legal provision. In that scenario, you would fight your case at your own level. Although the legal assistance would be required, but by making the more sensible pleadings, by making the more sensible drafting, we could easily win the battlegrounds. So in this video, I am going to discuss some important perspective. Let's start the presentation. Friends, judgment is passed by Honorable Madras High Court. Judgment is pronounced on fifteenth of June, two thousand twenty-three. In this case, the criminal appeal has been filed by the state, as per Section three seventy eight of CRPC, to set aside the impugned judgment passed by the consent trial court, whereby the accused has been acquitted, and further prayers made to convert the respondent accused in the present case. Friends, in this case, the consent appeal is prepared by the state, being agreed by the order of acquittal, as I mentioned earlier. and please note that if you are a law student or a upcoming lawyer in the anti corruption if the concerned accused is acquitted the state has a right to make the appeal as per section 378 of crpc and if you are convicted then you could make an appeal as per section 374 of crpc there is a basic difference between these two section 378 crpc and 374 crpc The basic prosecution is under Section Seven, Thirteen One D, Thirteen Two of the Prevention of Corruption Act, and apart from that, the proceeding has been initiated before the Special Court, and judgment has been passed on thirtieth of April, two thousand fifteen. So, by reading this primary fact, we are having the little bit idea about the case. Number one, the accused has been prosecuted. The section in which he is prosecuted are Section Seven and Thirteen One D of the Prevention of Corruption Act, and apart from that. he got acquitted in the trial proceeding because the prosecution failed to prove the case beyond reasonable doubt and after acquittal the state has filed the appeal as per section 378 of crpc friends as far as the prosecution is concerned the concerned complainant who is a farmer having the agriculture land around 5 acres in a particular village or a place to measure his land and fix boundaries he made a application twice to tehsildar and after his earlier two attempt Ended in vain, and for third time he paid fifty rupees as fee for survey and made application on twenty third of June two thousand six, enclosing the challan for payment of fees. So this is a basic fiber of the case that he communicated with the concerned tehsildar. He made the request, but all in vain, and finally he deposited the amount. And request was made to do the necessary things. On the same day he met with the accused, who was working as firka surveyor. and requested him to measure his land the basic point of the complainant is that for that work the concerned accused responded demanded rupees 3000 as bribe to do the survey of the land and intralia he submitted that unless the money is paid he will not visit the field and measure the land and his application will see the same fate of his earlier two application friends now by these facts we are clear on the following four points number 1 that accused had met with the concerned complainant okay now and this fact is not disputed number 2 complainant also met with the accused on earlier two occasion met with him but application has been rejected number 3 when he met third time he paid the requested fees and requested for the concerned measurement and last fact is that the accused had alleged demanded the alleged bribe amount for the work and further he threatened that as per the complaint that if the amount is not deposited he will not make the field visit and also not measure the land okay now and it is the case of the complainant that 
he again met with the accused on 31st of july 2006 that is very important friends because earlier he met on 23rd of june 2006 you got the point now so everything is clear to us no need to worry just we have to find out the real facts in the real sense so that we could fight the case so by what we could conclude the first meeting and subsequent meeting first meeting was on 23rd of june 2006 and second meeting was on 31st of july 2006 got the point now and requested to consider the application for measuring his land without bribe that is very important why he is insisting that it should be without bribe because when he chalk out the case that it should be made and the consent accused submitted that i will do it but i need bribe then why he is submitting that i do not want to give the bribe just measure it and there is no case of the complainant that again and again met with the accused and he made a friends it is not the case of complainant that again and again he met with the accused and he demanded the money rather than the case is that on a particular date that is 23rd of june he met with the accused he demanded the amount and ultimately after a delay of one month that is very important he again met with the accused and requested him to consider the application for measurement of the land without any bribe amount and friends you will totally relax to note that there is a concession in the consent bribe amount because the complainant mentioned that as a concession he reduced the demand from 3000 to 1500 a laughing task for the first time i am seeing a discount in bribe also be that as it may be the defendant complainant was not inclined to give the bribe amount and internally communicated with the anti corruption or vigilance department and and internally he gave the written report on 1st of august 2006 so now we are three facts number one the first meeting is on 23rd of june clear second meeting is on 31st of july and in the third meeting he lost the complaint to the acb or vigilance on 1st of august everything is clear to you now based on this complaint the inspector of police conducted the preliminary inquiry they told that they conducted but in fact there is no preliminary inquiry because they usually believe to give the voice recorder to the concerned complainant by submitting that you just visit the office of the concerned accused uh, internally or communicate with him and internally if he demands the money just record the same okay now but this procedure is not good procedure because in the preliminary inquiry they have to reveal the true facts whether the complaint is genuine or not he has to record the statement also and apart from that if he satisfied that the case is genuine then he has to proceed further but without following this procedure even in this case in the name of preliminary inquiry the voice recorder has been given the alleged voice has been recorded and he is satisfied by that voice that it is a genuine complaint and finally a crime has been registered and finally they have decided for pre trap and post trap proceeding while the accused receive the bribe amount the key point is that in the present case at hand two official witnesses has been arranged for the trap proceeding and after conducting the pre trap proceeding in the vigilance and anti corruption office the phenoptenin test proceedings has been demonstrated along with sodium carbonate test and apart from that the alleged number of the currency has been noted down and further the alleged currency note has been simmered with the phenolphthalein powder and after that they had been entrusted to the de facto complainant and money was kept in his shirt pocket and thereafter they proceeded further for post trap proceeding so by this fact we could draw the three conclusion number 1 they have allegedly verified the demand number 2 they have asked the concerned complainant to arrange the money to be the part of pre trap proceeding and in the pre trap proceeding the said ls note has been cemented with the phenolphthalein powder so that the further trap proceeding could be conducted in the very easy manner in the next uh, course of proceeding the concerned team has proceeded and internally reached the place or the spot and it is very important to note that de facto complainant and shadow witness were asked to go to the concerned office with tendered money his demands of money give him and then come out and give the singer the team will reach and internally catch and capture the accused red handed so this is a basic direction in the present case the primary key is that if a person demanded the money in internally the acb is going to instruct that if he demands the money primary key is that this point is itself sufficient to draw adverse presumption against the prosecution because for example if you are ready and willing to accept the money in that scenario if the concerned complainant comes to you you will never ask namaste sit down what about the case what is going to be happen simply you will emphasize and insist it on the money and there will be a possibility that the concerned accused will communicate with the complainant through himself or through any other person but such scenarios are usually absent in all the anti corruption and vigilance cases what they usually say we intralia had gone 
Intralia, he demanded Intralia be had given, be had come out and Intralia by signals the concerned team had reached out and Intralia caught the concerned accused red handed. So this is a basic theory, don't worry. But these three lines Intralia cast a doubt if he demands because at the inception they are very much clear that he demanded and it is verified. And now they are submitting that if he demands then give the money, come out, uh, Intralia mark the single we will come out and caught the concerned accused red handed. So this is a basic difference between the practicability and the theoretical approach of the concerned ACB. Got the point now? And a number of cases the ACB, CBI are going to conduct the trap proceeding in such a way. So in that scenario we could say that the prosecution itself not sure about the proceeding. Now the case of the concerned complainant is that the defect of complainant shadow witness came out from the concerned office at 4.20 pm and told the trap laying officer that accused has gone to sub collector office and they were informed he is expected to return after 6 pm. That is a very important fact because if the concerned accused is having an intent then he would definitely be present and will ask the money where is the money but in the present case the accused was not present because the time fixed for giving the money is on the record and the possibility should be that the accused should be present but intra he was not present. So it is going to probabilize the defense of the accused that he never intend for such bribe amount because if he intend then definitely he would be present and apart from that it is further mentioned that it is expected to return it means again the prosecution is not sure that when he will come. In really it is mentioned that it is expected to return after 6 pm or he may not come to the office. Very important fact to be noted down. Please note down this. He may come after 6 pm or he may not come the possibility is very much less for example if someone is asking you that mr a i have rupees 2000 for you and i am standing at so and so place and the surety is there that you will get the money what will you do you will immediately communicate with that person you will immediately do all the efforts to find that person by leaving all your tasks because money is important at that time but if the money is important then why he is showing the laziness or the neutral behavior to not to have the money in his hand. Because as per the prosecution, the case is not that the accused communicated and he told or threatened that the money is to be given at so and so time at so and so place. Rather than the case is that when we enter Leah for the purpose of post trip proceeding, it is the office of the concerned accused, it has come to our knowledge that he has gone to sub collector office and there is a possibility that or expectation that he will return after 6 pm or he may not come to office. Okay, no? So it is a very good case as far as the defense is concerned. After waiting for the accused till 6.15 pm, the trap team written back. That is very important point to be noted. The proceeding of that day was recorded and thereafter the defecto complainant was asked to come on the next day. The trap money was left with the defecto complainant. Uh, the complainant was asked to come on the next day. The trap money was left with defecto complainant. The big mistake done by the concerned ACB team because it's a case property and in no circumstances it could be allowed to be with the de facto complainant with an instruction to bring it back. Why? You are having malkhana, storeroom. You could keep the concerned currency without any further manipulation because it is a basic guidelines of Honorable Supreme Guide and Honorable High Court that the evidence should not be contaminated. Cooperating and favoring the complainant in such a way, entirely indicating that the concerned team was also intended to trap the accused. In that scenario, I could see that. They are affected by confirmation bias because they confirmed you as an accused and collecting the evidence in such a way so that they could prove you the guilt without any fault of your own. In really they have forgotten the basic principle of criminal jurisprudence that every accused shall be deemed to be innocent unless proven guilty. But they presume you guilty and collect the evidence and presume you always that you are guilty. So they in really are trying to play with the criminal jurisprudence of this country. They are trying to make mockery of the Indian constitution and the CRPC of this country. Okay, now got the point now? It is a case of concerned prosecution that on second day, it means on 2nd of August 2006 at about 7.30 am, the defect of complainant reported to the inspector. Please note down that the inspector is not authorized for investigation as per section 17 of the PCA. Usually this question is asked from me whether he is competent or not. Please note down that he is not competent and recently on the Supreme Court in his judgment dated 28th of April 2023 had clarified this position also. Okay, now got the point now? Uh, now we are coming on the story again. The shadow witness has been called again a fresh interestment mother. Mother means the memorandum. Because uh, in the proceeding at Rajasthan, 
it is usually called as a document of panchanama or the pre trap proceeding panchanama and in the maharashtra zone in the karnataka zone in the south zone it is usually referred as maza and intralia team again left for the consent accused office reached as the office and the consent defect to complain and the shadow witness went to the office of the accused and again the accused was absent that is very important and the key point is that in the whole period the accused never did anything to communicate with the complainant or intralia did nothing to accept the alleged amount the case is that they waited for accused outside the office in india for the first time i am seeing that the complainant is waiting for giving the money not the accused for accepting the money itself it is indicating that the case is totally suspicious and by hook and crook the de facto complainant intend to trap out the concerned accused at about 6:50 pm in the evening the accused came in two wheeler named as tvs 50 bearing registration number so and so the de facto complainant and shadow witness met him and when the accused asked why they were waiting that is very important on the de facto complainant asked the accused when he will come and visit your land the key point is that again this time the accused had not raised any demand he have with him the money demanded and offer it to the accused that is very important the accused initially refused to receive the money saying that he is in habit of receiving money only after completing the work that is a hypothetical statement of the concerned complainant because if you are offering a money to a person there is a less possibility that he will not accept this thing so in the present case he cooked the story that when he offered he refused to take so it means he never intend to take so the key point is that now we have a three facts number one whenever the concerned complainant went to meet the concerned accused he was not there and finally when he was met intralia he offered the bribe but the concerned accused refused to accept the same that is very important however the de facto complainant insisted why he is insisting because it is a totally manipulative trap please note down the same to receive the money saying that if the money is left with him he may spend the money very surprising and suspicious position as far as the prosecution is concerned the accused received the money in his right hand that is a allegation and kept the same inside his left side pocket of his pen and thereafter the de facto complainant came out and gave the pre arranged single to the trap team the trap team led by the inspector after accused being identified by the de facto complainant conducted sodium carbonate test of the both the hand of the accused it is usually called the phenolphthalein test and usually it should be conducted as soon as possible as per the guidelines of honorable supreme court in n vijay kumar versus state judgment is passed on 3rd of february 2021 very important judgment as far as phenolphthalein test is concerned the solution turned into red color even though it is turned to red color then there is no need to worry because karnataka high court submitted in gd mera swami that even though it is turned pink it will not raise the presumption that the accused is guilty because mere recovery of money does not allow the prosecution to raise the presumption they have to prove the foundation fact as per the guidelines of honorable supreme court in neeraj that versus state of ncit in which it is clarified that the prosecution has to prove the demand if demand is not proved the other scenario could not be a concluding factor to raise presumption against the accused being satisfied he has ended the tainted money and accused was asked to hand over the money received from the de facto complainant from the left side of the pant of the consent accused the money was recovered and it was marked accordingly the number and the currency note were compared with the mazhar proceedings and apart from that it is mentioned that they got tally an accused was asked to produce the file pertaining to the application given by the de facto complainant for measuring of his land now the key point is that the defense of the accused is very important in these cases the accused submitted that he has not accepted not demanded the money from the complainant the money was thrusted inside his pocket while he was preparing receipt for the flag day donation offered by de facto complainant that is very important the receipt for flag day donation recovered by trap laying officer during the trial they were marked as exhibit by defense and the concerned witnesses was also present to corroborate the same the prosecution has examined the witnesses exhibit documents the defense intralia examined himself and also marked documents the trial court extended the benefit of doubt and intralia acquitted the accused the state went to the honorable high court they submitted that the recovery is from the accused and that's why presumption of section 20 of prevention of corruption act could be drawn 
and apart from that the money has been demanded there is a recovery the work is pending these factors are sufficient to draw the presumption against the accused the defense theory is that he threw away the money and apart from that the prosecution submitted that the defense theory is totally concocted because it is submitted that he threw away the money and apart from that it has been recovered and the phenoxin test is also positive so in that scenario he totally failed to raise a defense by preponderance of the probability and apart from that the attack of the prosecution is that the contention of accused that money was offered under the pretext of contributing the flag day collection is also not probable since according to the accused he has prepared three receipts of rupees 10 each in the name of de facto complainant whereas two 500 currency note and five 100 currency note as a bunch given to the accused and which he has accepted in his hand and apart from that he kept the same in the pocket of his pen and the same has been recovered and presence of phenoxine powder the confirmation test and other scenarios entirely confirm the case of prosecution and he is wrongly acquitted by the consent trial court the same was opposed by the counsel for the accused respondent the court has considered each and everything the court specified that the prosecution is bound to prove the basic thing the basic foundation fact that is demand but in the present case at hand the fact is scary indicating that whenever he tried to offer the consent accused person shows his refuseness shows his avoiding behavior to accept the same in that scenario it could not be said that he is having the guilty position and apart from that there are contradiction in the statement of prosecution and apart from that the acceptance and demand and other scenario could not connect the accused with the crime unless and until the fundamental fact of demand is not proved in that scenario the court specified that the defense raised by the concerned accused is highly probable if the proper case in term of demand is not put up by the concerned prosecution the concerned prosecution is totally failed to prove the demand beyond doubt the foundation fact is not proved in that scenario the presumption of section 20 of the prevention of corruption act so looking to the fact and circumstances the court had formulated the three points number one as far as the demand is concerned it is not proved as far as the acceptance is concerned the accused refuse when intralia the consent prosecution or the consent complainant offered the money that could connect the accused with the concerned crime so prosecution rightly failed to prove the demand and acceptance so judgment passed by the concerned trial court is totally healthy and there is no need for any interference so court dismiss the appeal accordingly so friends it is a very important judgment as far as section 7 of pc act is concerned so if you are going to fight a case of prevention of corruption act do the proper briefing do proper research and do other things so that you could find an efficient solution do not fight your case in a routine manner in a casual manner be professional even you are a client also so first find out what is the case second find out what is the theory and third find out the legal position and then prepare your defense and then proceed further definitely we will be succeeded friend for such videos and update please follow and like my page and subscribe my channel see you in the next video friends if you want such updates and videos and lectures on the anti corruption laws please follow and like my page see you in the next video till then jai hind jai bharat